Hey there, Miller Stretch Bell Gamers. So uh, we're here with our basically our first kind of review of the new edition. We're going to be reviewing all the new books that have come out since uh, the, the main rulebook. Uh, so we're going to be doing the Miller Strategy Battle Game rulebook, the Hobbit uh, Armies of the Hobbit, and the Armies of the Lord of the Rings. So you want to start with the uh, main rules? Yeah. Okay, so what, what's your like, initial thoughts on the rules? So um, I remember when the rulebook first came out, um, I didn't really look at them. Uh, and um, I was talking to some people at Nova who had looked at them a little bit more in depth than I had. And uh, they said that they thought this was the best edition of the rules that we've had. Um, but they felt like um, with some of the changes that were necessary, uh, they have overcomplicated things in a sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and for example, you, uh, we posted our video of the battle report of the Easterlings and the... Um, uh, also uh, like our first battle report we ever did with the new rules. Yeah, yeah. there's been a couple of instances where, um, for example, the heroic challenge. There's so many different heroics now, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes you can misplay them accidentally. Like I misplayed that heroic challenge I did in the, yeah. the East Blues versus Gondor number three, and also with um, different heroes knowing different um, limited heroics, which I think needed to happen. I don't think every hero needed to be able to strike. I don't think every hero needed to be able to march and stuff. Um, with that uh, change. When I was charging some of the Easterling models, mm -hmm. they had a heroic strike, and I didn't know they had that. Yeah. So it's kind of like, you just have to make sure, like, what heroics do they have, how does it work, stuff like yeah. that. I think that, I think that uh, with the old rules, which were a little bit more simple, players still got some things wrong, where now... Um, they address the cha they they address the problems and change them, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit complicated. But I don't think it's like overbearing. I just that's my initial reaction. Yeah, so for me, I've had quite a few games now with this new edition. So there's uh, there's a video you guys can find in our library called "Rules We Want to See." I posted it about two years ago. Um, I think the points I made is I want to see a nerf in magic, reduction in magic, nerf of heroic strike. Nerf of Pearl, um, they, those were like the, I think the four main things, and all four of those did come true, uh, and all those I'm very happy about. So we saw a big nerf in Magic. It was kind of small, simple wordings and things like that that they did that, that changed how that's kind of going to be played out, uh, which I'm glad to see. Uh, I think they initially, my initial reaction to the rules is I really do like it. I think it changed a lot of things I wanted to see. It makes taking bigger heroes more viable. Uh, adding the heroic tears, I think, was something I didn't really think about doing. Like, like I didn't, like I just kind of assumed, like, okay, so you're going to have uh, your big hero. He can lead 18 guys. I never really thought about that. I said not only really a change I thought about, like, when yeah. I was kind of thinking, but it's something that I thought was really good. Was yeah. Really, really, yeah. Yeah. Um... So, like, for the heroics, um, I thought, like, kind of, like, thinking about when, when, like, when they were doing uh, articles and stuff, I thought, like, a heroic tier. So, for instance, a hero a legend would have access to all the heroics. I didn't know if they were going to, um, how they were going to break the heroics up. Uh, for the most part, I think that it was really well balanced, um, I think, and I do agree. For right now, it's pretty confusing when you're playing a game, you're like, well, who has this heroic, who, who has this? Yeah. It's just gonna be something I think we're gonna have to play a lot of games and learn. It's kind of like how how it was in the Hobbit edition. The changes they made to that, it took us ten or fifteen games just to yeah no to get, yeah yeah the changes from the yeah. like the um like when they first uh, introduced all the different um, special strikes you could do in the yeah. Hobbit, nobody used them at first, and then I we started kind of messing around with them, and then yeah. you started making lists. Uh, uh, that revolved around the special strikes. Yeah, and I think um, so. Like the special strikes, like piercing strike, for instance, it got kind of nerfed a little bit, which I think it needed to. You yeah. don't, you know, you don't need like a strength ten uh, warrior or whatever. Yeah, and they also um, they made faint. There's a negative. Yeah, yeah uh, faint, yeah. faint. So the thing about faint before is there was really no negative. No negative. I mean, 
as long as you had Fight Force Spear support or whatever, you had a higher Fight yeah. Spear support, you could fight for free. There's nothing, no bad thing to do. But now, if you're a lower fight value than the guy you're fighting against, Takes then a you take stab, a stab, yeah, two a stab wound, yeah. Hit. Which I think that's good. That's, again, something I didn't really think about. Uh, it's just like the changes they made are all things that I didn't, I never really kind of thought about, like, never, like, kind of aspects. And I, I really like them. I yeah, think, I think yeah. they, uh, don't get me wrong, when I, when I brought up the, the negative things, with the heroic uh, actions kind of being a little bit confusing. I uh, do agree with those guys. I think this is the best edition we've seen. Yeah, I agree. It's the most 100%. overall balanced. Uh -huh. And I think it has a really high quality of playability. Yeah, so I think, like, the big blue rule book, it was a great, great book, you know, it introduced us to the game. Then the Hobbit book came out. It, it changed things and it added some things, but I think, you know, it needed some refinement. Yeah. And this rule book, um, it was the refinement. Yeah, we got process. the refinement. Oh, with this rule book, it's the refinement that we all uh, all wanted. Yeah. Um. And so, so let's talk about okay. So we talk about heroics. Yeah. Uh, we talk about strikes. Like yeah. the those are kind of the big monsters, things. creatures, Hurl. monsters, creatures. Uh, yeah, Hurl got um, uh, nerfed a little bit. I think yeah, it's a straight line and it's yeah. D three plus difference in strength, which is actually something I recommended in our other video. The video I stopped on. I said, I kind of want to see it become a D3. Um, magic. Yeah, magic. Okay, well, let's talk about uh, monsters can't perform uh, more than one uh, brutal power attack now in a turn. So you can only do one. So there's no more Fell Beast hurl, heroic combat over, and then hurl something else into a battle line. So you can only perform one brutal power attack now, which I think is good. Um, so yeah, magic was the big one for me. Um, so, like, for instance, transfix. You're no longer fight value half, attack half, can't move, can't uh, do that, unless you channel it. You have to channel it to get all that. Now, it's if you transfix the model, they can't move, and I think if you, it's like the same if you, if you get in combat with them, then they can't strike blows back, but their fight value is not halved, and their attacks are not halved. Yeah. Which I think is more friendly for like bigger Oh yeah, definitely. Heroes, yeah. Uh, um, back in the original, so they actually have worked on transfix a couple times because yeah. in the big rule book the big blue one um it used to be that you were reduced to one attack, one attack. and you were one reduced fight to one. fight one yep. and then it, when the hobbit rules came out they changed it to it's halved uh and you can't strike blows uh. and you can't move uh. which that's always been yeah one of the things you can't really do anything else mm. um but with it now is your attack your fight value is not halved yeah unless you channel it um, Which I like. Yeah. Because yeah. it still has a, a use. Like, you can transfix somebody that can't move. Uh, they can't take strict blows against somebody. So it's still fairly, I guess, It's still effective. Useful. Yeah. 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 Um, another big one is Sorcerer's Blast. I don't know that Sorcerer's Blast has been a really big uh, magic power people use a lot. And uh, that was um, uh, nerfed, I guess. Uh, if you Sorcerer's Blast the model now. So let's take out a model, you Sorcerer's Blast the guy into him, he stops at that model now, so you stop at the first model. Yeah. So there's no more like disrupting an entire shield, shield wall. wall or whatever with a, one blast. We uh, we talked about why uh, Magic was so, I guess, over overpowered. Yeah. And it was really, be not the fact that it just deals so much damage, it's the fact that it really disrupts the flow of the game. Yeah. Like, um... I've never taken magic before, like at, to a tournament, and I finally decided this year of Nova Open to take Saruman. And I can definitely see why magic was a meta because literally there were I think three of the games I had the fact that I had magic and uh, most of them, I don't think any of the opponents I've ever did for those three games. It really gave me an advantage because I was able to transfix heroes, sorcerers, blast guys. Um, you know, command models off objectives. That that aspect of the um, game was something that I never really used that much. And then as soon as I started using it, I kind of saw why it needed to to be nerfed because uh, it <laughs> definitely did. Um, but yeah, I think I think like we're gonna see different because of that. We're gonna see different armies now coming out. I think I still think Gandalf and Saruman and the Ring Wraiths and and that kind of thing are gonna have big parts to play in the game. Uh, but I think it's going to be different. Kind of a different role, almost. So, uh, we talked about monsters, we talked about magic, we talked about uh, the heroics. Um, 
I think they were fine a few things here and there. Uh, you know, not, not much I can remember. They did add a bunch of new really good special rules, actually. Yeah, oh, yeah. They, they, they universal. Yeah. They they made a lot of special rules universal. Uh, they added a few of my favorite ones. Uh, one being horse lords, uh, which love horse lords, which is a really good one. Yeah. Uh, Anybody who's had a, a martial hero mounted, and had their horse killed in the first turn would love horse lords. Yeah. yeah, horse lords basically is the rule where if you, uh, everyone has it. Most of the Rohan heroes have. It. I think all the Rohan heroes have it actually. Yeah. If your horse takes a wound. You hear I may expand the fate point to to heal that the yeah. wound for the horse, which I think was really good. They needed they needed to do something like that because I mean, as soon as you kill like Elisar's horse, or Thaden or Amir, yeah, whoever, whoever's whoever's on a horse, as soon as you kill that, they lose half their knockout power or more than half. Yeah, and if it's an army that kind of revolves around that, what having one easy uh, is kind of like the Achilles tendon. Having that one easy Achilles uh, tendon. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, let's just... All right, we're good. Yep. His army just lost all its power. Yeah. It's a little bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, if you first archer armies, like Harad, like Elves, like Rohan in some cases, you know, taking a lot of horse, uh, a lot of hits, like archer hits, you're almost almost guaranteed to lose that, that horse, depending on how many resources someone's willing to pour into it. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was good to see that. Um, so the Heroic Tears, we talked about that, that, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, the Heroic Tears. We, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah, so we will go into the Heroic Tears. We talked about Hero as a Legend. Hero of Legend is a pretty rare status. Yeah. Uh, I think most factions for good have at least one. Evil has less, but they still have a few, yeah. a handful. Um, so, like, Thaden is a Hero of Legend. LSI, Aragorn's a Hero of Legend. Um, I think Dane is a Hero of Legend now. Yeah. Um, Thorin is a Hero of Legend for Error Reclaimed. You know, so there, there, there's at least one per faction for the most part. Um, so like a hero legend can lead 18 troops, and they have a special rule. It's only heroes of legend have this. Is they automatically pass their first courage test. They're called to make when broken. So they basically it's get fearless good. for that one that one courage test. Yeah. Um, so then there's the hero of valor, uh, which is a hero that is relatively common. I think most factions have at least one yeah, or two of them. Yeah. Uh, they can lead up to 15 troops. Yeah. And then there's Hero Fortitude, who can lead 12, like normal. That's, I think, the most common one, or Fortitude. Yeah. And then there are minor heroes. Who can lead six. Who can lead six. Which Baragond and Damrod became minor heroes. Yep. A lot of the kind of heroes that people um, complained about before were like Eowyn and uh, Baragond. Yeah, could and lead 12. Yeah, could lead 12 troops. Look, I think that's a good change. I think yeah, I think that's that a good change, cheese, too. Cheese ball thing to yeah, do. I think that's a good, a good change. Something they needed to do to balance out. Like, and, you know, like we were talking about, I think it makes it also more viable to take that big hero of legend. Yeah, yeah. It gives you a little bit more incentive to take him because you get the extra um, um, slots. I'm trying to think about rules that I noticed changed. Uh, like banners, if they're on the ground now. Yeah, they changed yeah. Uh, quite a few things. Yeah, it's little small things um, here and there. But... Like, for instance, you can't spear support through a bigger base, bigger base size. Yeah, so more goblin spear um, supporting a troll. For the most part, the way it's worded is you can't take a spear and a banner. Like, I know that uh, the Minister of um, the Fountain Guards, uh -huh. they used to be able to take a spear and a banner. Yeah. Well, they can't now. Yeah, that's yeah. actually that's another thing I talked about in that same video. Is I wanted to see like because there there is a guy we play with. He took a high elf warrior, uh, upgraded him to a king's guard, gave him a banner, gave him a shield, gave him a bow, <laughs> gave him a spear, gave him a spear, and that guy. I mean, yeah, it's an expensive model to have, but I I don't see like the imagery doesn't make sense to me to have a guy who can have a banner, have a spear, have a bow, have a yeah. shield, and, and be able to use all those. Yeah, and exactly. It, it made it a pretty hard piece to try and deal with. Especially have to worry about other high elf heroes. Yeah, I mean that's when I was taking the fountain. I used to always take a fountain guard with a, a shield and a spear mm -hmm. and a banner. It's like, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. So um, but yeah, I think that's for the most part the changes. I really like the new rule set. Uh, you know the the things that I do dislike about it, which, which are small things and they're right now kind of I think, they're not long term. It's short term. Just trying to remember. Yeah, remember everything. Right. Every, that's and that's where I was. Yeah. I am is I love the rules. I think that it's a great experience to play a game. Mm -hmm. um, it is a little bit difficult to remember um, who all has what heroic. Yeah. Um, and furthermore, what 
uh, how each heroic actually is works and yep. when you're supposed to call and stuff because there's so many heroics now. Yeah. It's like, okay. Um, yeah, so there's heroic challenge, yep. heroic uh, accuracy, which was an old one yep. from the Hobbit, heroic march, which was one from the Hobbit. Then there's heroic strike, yep. which was one added from the Hobbit. Um, now there's heroic uh, defense. Yeah. Okay, so, so I'll start with the new ones. Heroic defense. Yeah. Heroic uh, strength. strength. Resolve. Resolve. Um, there, what is it? Uh, what's the one? Resolve is the one with the magic, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Resolve is a good one where your uh, guys are immune to magic. So, yeah, so. Or like you, get, you get resistant to magic. You get resistant yeah, I was thinking of yeah. one of the new magic powers. Um, oh, then there's uh, heroic challenge. Yep. And. I think it's all of them. Those five? Uh, I can't remember it right off the top of my head. But those are all five new ones, and they add different aspects to the game. Um, heroic combat, heroic movement, and heroic shot are all ones that are common that anyone can do. Yeah. Um, I think the new heroics actually function really well, playing them. Yeah, that's actually another aspect of them nerfing um, magic, is yeah. uh, the ability for everybody to be able to get a magic resistance. Yep. And they change how magic resistance actually works. Yeah. As you get a dice to um, defend magic. Regardless. Regardless, yeah. and even you can use that before will. Yeah. So before, you'd have to be out of will to use your magic resistance. Yeah, it was kind of pointless. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of pointless. But now, you can use it before you use any will, and it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the new heroes are great. I think uh, the, the ones that I really enjoy using the most is defense, because uh, it's such a good uh, thing. And I've talking talking to Dan, and a few, I noticed in the games I've had, it's easier to kill models now. Like, heroes tend to have, I think, heroes and really troops also tend to have like a I don't know it seems like my my Rohan army for instance it just has a lot more yeah. power yeah the army bonuses yeah. kind of add in something special yeah, with the army bonuses and that kind of thing so yeah. armies hit harder so having something like heroic defense where your model can hold up a, a really a key like heroic combat for a turn to me is something that adds a new it's something they needed to do um, because otherwise it's it's like okay well I got LSR but the heroic combat through Eric and Brand. Yeah, so and, yeah. hold so, him up for turn. Yeah, or Gamla. He's, he's the guy who has heroic defense from yeah. Rohan. But, um, yeah, so I think that's most of the key things for the rules I noticed. They did add a, um, keywords for, like, uh, profiles, and they added, like, passive abilities and active abilities. Yeah, so for, that's so. that's a good, uh, good, good thing to talk about yep. is the uh, active abilities and passive the active means it has to be activated that turn, so if you're yep. immobilized, you can't actually activate it. But mm -hmm. passively means if you, you are immobilized, you have it, yeah. doesn't doesn't need to be activated. And that's something that I'm going to have to get used to myself, because uh, I know there's a handful of rules in most armies I play, and I, I'm going to need to probably sit down yeah. one day and look at that and say, okay, well, if I get transfixed or something, you know, do I want to make sure, you know... Yeah, is it, is it a passive or is it an active? Yeah, so I'm going to have to look that up. For, for myself, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much the core aspects of the uh, of the rules, at least I can remember. Uh, I really enjoy it. It's a little bit more to remember and read, uh, like from the initial yeah. two editions. But I think in the long term, it's I gonna think be... it's going to add to the um, overall um, a better experience. Yeah. In terms of playing, mm -hmm. and you know, even when they, I was reading through it. Not thinking about how to memorize it or whatever, I was like, "Yeah, these are good changes." Yeah, these are good changes, and um, you know, I think it's good. Yeah, I agree. I, I just think it's good. I think it's a really good book. I really, uh, you know, basically from when I first read it, I think it's gonna be like, I think it's really good for for just the whole game as a, and all. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna move on into the uh, armies and the Earth review or armies of the Lord of the Rings review. Uh, so, what's your initial thoughts on this? Um, so when I first cracked open the book, uh, the, some of the first things I looked at was Gondor. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, uh, I think that, um, and as a Gondor player, I like what they did with LSR. Yeah. I think, um, he could stand to have one more rule. Mm -hmm. I, I know he has Mighty Hero, okay, but if you look at somebody like Dane, for instance, he has like uh, almost they, two pages of yeah, rules. Yeah, he has almost two pages of rules, and he's cheaper, I believe. Yeah, yeah, a lot cheaper. Um, uh, somebody like, I don't know, Emmerhill, who's uh -huh. a 12-inch banner, who, um, he doesn't... Buffs fight values. He buffs fight values. 12-inch steadfast. 12-inch steadfast. 
Aragorn and he has twelve the twelve inch banner. Bard, same thing. Yeah. Um, Alisar is a six inch banner, and I think it'd be interesting if they gave him something else. Uh, another some form of um, I don't know so, uh, some other kind something of role to, that yeah, buffs troops. Or maybe like anyone within three inches gets plus one of their fight value because yeah. they did not increase Minister of War's fight values. Yep. Uh, I didn't know if they would or not. They did not. Yep. Uh, I was hoping they would, because mm -hmm. I, I would love to use more Minister of Warriors. Yeah. Uh, just because I like the models, you yeah. know. Um, but they didn't, so uh, that would have been something nice. Um, they did fix, they did change Boromir. So I think he's, uh, right now, where it stands, Boromir in the banner is almost a must. Yeah, I, I, I can see it. Um, one thing I noticed pretty much for all the special units that Rohan and Gondor, specifically those two armies, can take. Is like Rohan Royal Guard, Guard of the Fountain Court, Citadel Guard, kind of these like elite units. I noticed like to me it's just something interesting because they I look at their courage value now. They have bodyguard, you know, which is great. But I look at their courage value. They actually got re reduced courage. Yeah, all of them got reduced one. The courage, the courage three. Um, that's one thing I kind of don't like because it doesn't make sense to me. Like, what's the point? Like, uh, what's the point of like that guy being a special unit? They do have bodyguard, which I do understand. Yeah. But in my mind, they should still be courage four. But you do get your army bonus, which then would make yeah. It plus one. That, yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. Is um, you look at other armies, and they get plus one of their courage, and they get something else. Yeah. So they get two bump, two kind of two buffs like that. Yeah, I noticed that a lot in the hard and, ones. And Gondor just gets plus one courage. Yeah. So it, it's kind of it's kind of bland, you know. Like as a Gondor player, now some of the other armies, uh, like Durin's folk, uh, I would say Durin's folk got a lot better. Yeah. Okay. So um, um, army bonus wise, I actually think the plus one courage is still really good. No, it is yeah. good. But, but I can see what you're talking about because yeah. like. Um, Rohan, for instance, their army bonus, which, by the way, I'll talk about Rohan real quick. Uh, I really like the changes they made to Rohan. Uh, Thaden now is actually, like, the Thaden that I wanted to see. He has, you know, the might he needs, the will he needs. Uh, he can lead 18, uh, troops, because he's a hero legend. Um, he, Herogrim now can do something cool. He can faint even, and he doesn't take the stab, uh, damage. Um, the Rohan Royal Guard became better in terms of their fight value and, I think, the way they play. Uh, that being said, you know, the courage is a thing. Yeah, they get the plus five, the plus one to their yeah, fight. Yeah, plus one. Uh, so, yeah, anyone, if you charge that turn, then you get plus one of your fight value. Riders get it, and Royal Guard get it. They didn't, they didn't give them that rule. And then the army bonuses is you get plus one to your strength on the turn you charge. So the thing I've noticed now with Rohan is the turns you charge are way more devastating than they were. And they always were pretty devastating. Yeah, they're also a lot more important, almost. Yeah, they are also very much more important. Uh, the heroes... Uh, Thadred got hugely buffed, um, that one fade point and then getting that really hard hitting, he got, uh, an extra attack, and then his, um, his rule where he gets to re-roll to wound, to me, is massive, I mean, it's just, whew, man, his profile, I really like. Uh, Gambling got better, he got an extra might, he got, uh, the banner got a little bit better, I mean, it was always great, yeah. but... Now he doesn't take the negative penalty. Now he gets some like points. I think that banner is almost a must. I think the banner. We, we, we've been yeah. talking about this. I think that Galen with the banner and Thedon. Yeah. And Ymir. Yeah. All those are like a must take. I, th I think, and I think the thing is too is the you need to have a banner, with the fight five guys because if you botch a you charge and you botch it you don't you can't risk you you know you have to have that reroll, so that's just something I've noticed. I think is it a six inch banner? Or just no, nah, it's three inch banner. Okay. But um. I think that the rules are uh, for Rohan are really good. Anyone who's been a, a Rohan enthusiast throughout the years will enjoy it a lot. Um, so we'll start. We start with Gondor and Rohan. Well, yeah, yeah. let me go back to Gondor real quick because yeah. they. Uh, all right, so uh, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. Uh, as I kind of was hoping they would change the profiles up a little bit more. Yeah. Um, I really love what they did with LSR. Yeah. Wish they went just a little bit further. Uh -huh. um, but I'm not going to complain about it. I think that he's. A, He's good. Yeah, he also yeah. got a big point decrease. Yeah, he got a huge point. That's another and thing. And Andurl got better. Andurl got better, and he has a six-inch banner, which is good. You don't have to yeah. pay the twenty-five points for a banner. Um, Boromir, I think, got better. Uh, he, the banner gives you is a six-inch range now for yeah. the banner and the buff. So he, anybody within six inches, you get him plus one fight, which is good. So and that's something interesting you could do. 
Uh, Faramir, I think Faramir got better. He did get better. He got an increase of five points. Uh huh. And got plus one courage. Got plus, plus one, one courage. Will. Plus one will. He got a roll for yeah fearless basically with Denethor. Um, Denethor got more expensive but did not get better. Although he yeah he did actually he got a new rule where uh, if Boromir's alive then he passes he passes his uh, broken, broken mind. mind. Yeah. So you see that combo kind of uh, working out. Neither the White Tower got better. He got extra mind point. Yeah. 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 And um, also uh, Gandalf can lead. Yeah. And we're talking uh, Gandalf the White is way more beasty now than he was. Yeah. He's uh he's basically a combat hero in terms of like he has two attack base now. He has strength five of course because Galandrian. Then you talk about him mounting him on Shadow Facts. Shadow Facts has will and fate. Uh, so Shadow Facts can re resist magic. Yeah. And take a wound. And Gandalf can charge in and be a combat beast with, yeah, with yeah. the magic. And Gandalf has some of the best magic powers that, I, in my opinion, he has really good defensive ones and really good offensive ones. Um, so Gandalf, because he's a hero of valor too, so he can lead quite a few guys. Yeah, fifteen guys. So I, I do think Minister they got, and they're also getting more guys because they've gone to a war. Yeah, that's yeah. another thing is uh, they released Huron, they released Ingold, um, mm -hmm. and they also announced. Uh, I roll, I roll this. Yeah. Like so those, I mean, who, and who knows what those guys will add here? And I've already used them. Uh, I think he's amazing. Unfortunately, yeah. he, he, again, you had, he, yeah, like, he, had, he kind of bit the dust quick, yeah. but yeah, he, yeah, he hits hard. He has really good, uh, rule to ignore. Um, yeah, he's kind of, yeah, he's kind of good to put in with a big hero. Cause yeah. You yeah. can actually throw that big hero in. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little bit more willy nilly. Yeah. You know, not as careful. And uh, Ingold is actually really good too. Yeah, he is. And, you know, his he's basically a Kyrian level guy. Same stat line, higher defense, and then his rule. We were talking, you can have like 14 Fountain Guard of Ingold. Your guys are not backing up. That's a pretty hard shield wall. You get into an objective. Yeah. It's going to be pretty hard to get that off. Um, but. We'll have to see, because Gondor or I mean, who knows, they might even have more characters we don't know about, you know, so we'll have to see about that Baragon and his son kind of thing. Yeah, uh, elves um, got better. Yeah, so, so we'll start, we should start with the, the beginning of the book. Yeah. We saw about Gondor on, but like, uh, the Shire, I think, is the first army in there, in the book. It might be Shire and the Rangers. Uh, the Shire, I play the Hobbits, I love them. Uh, they, they got a little bit nerfed, they kind of needed to, like, they're, you have to... One of the things I think Adam Troke talked about in the seminars, they made it where they wanted armies to be more thematic. So, for instance, you can't take Bullroar Took in this army, and if you do, then you lose, like, your bonuses and stuff. But, you know, then you can take um, Dunedain with Gandalf. So, like, they made it to where you have to play your Hobbit army very thematic, which I think they needed to do because you can take hobbits with elves and that kind of thing yeah and another thing that's important before i think we talk about other armies is the matrix chart yeah that's yeah. uh yeah my bad yeah that's another yeah, that's, they're, they're, that's how many new rules there are yeah is i think that they each add to the quality of the game yeah um and they're very subtle yeah so in order so they had uh they added an army matrix yep um, if, if there's like what the the historical alliance, yeah, historical alliance, which means you can ally with other armies, and you still get your army bonuses. You still get your army bonuses. Then there's uh, allies of convenience, yeah, but you lose your army bonus, but you get everything else. Yeah. Then there's uh, what is Impossible it? Impossible alliance or yeah. something like that. Yeah, something like that, uh, which you can be in, but you, then you don't benefit off of hero other heroic actions. Yeah, which is big. Yeah, which is huge. I mean, it's kind of like. Taking a shade with umbar kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. there's some cheesy stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, stuff like that. I think, and it, that's just before we get into the armies that I think we should have brought that up. Because yeah, because like, that kind of yeah, adds to the yeah. army. Yeah, because uh, like the hobbits now, you can't ally them in with elves, uh, and get your army bonus and all that. Which the hobbit army bonus is alright. I'm not, I'm not like huge about it. You get a uh, woodland creature, um, but I think they're good. They reduce their bows from bows to short bows. Uh, which is something that I think was talked about a lot. They kind of needed to do. Um, I think I do think though that um, you can do some really cool things with hobbits. I just haven't done it. Yet. I had one game against Goblins and I got Rex. So I didn't get to really see too much of what changed. But what I do think changed needed it to be changed. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Rangers, that's a pretty big one. Yeah, that. So they kind of took Arnor split and split in two. Yep. Um, so the Rangers was part of Arnor, I guess, back in the. Yeah, Rangers. Old edition. It was. Rangers and Arnor were an army. Uh, they basically now made it to where Aragorn and Halvorad are the only two characters you can take, unless you take Arathorn. 
And he's like in, in the old. Yeah. So you can't take him yeah. with those two. So I've noticed in, uh, there's some of the new, uh, a lot of the new uh, profiles is some of the older heroes like uh, Gilgalad, Gilgalad uh, Kings of Men, Kings of Men, uh, Errol the Young, Errol the Young, Arathorn. Is they you don't you can't take them with Aragorn. Aragorn. Uh, it, it says that you can. He can. It be says them. you can, but as soon as you do, then you become allies of. Uh, you become impossible allies with like everyone, and you lose your army bonus. Yeah, so it's a big deal. Yeah, um, and that's you know just another thing they did subtle, and I think it's gonna stop some of the uh, kind of cheese you see. I think um, Rangers are really solid. You, uh, they don't. There's no more Rangers of Arnor. We just have regular warriors. The whole army now are heroes. Uh, Aragorn, of course, he's a beast. He's a hero of valor form. Then Halvorad, he's also a beast. You can take all Rangers of the North, who are uh, defense five. They're fight four. Uh, they have bows, and one might one will one fate. And then their army bonus is they get two attacks if they're on foot. So they're actually I can see them being a really effective fighting force personally. And they can they can ally in with the Hobbits, yeah. Which I I think would be a really viable option. Um, then I think um, the next army is Numenor. I think in the book. Which, <laughs> Numenor is a beast now. Yeah, I think Numenor got a really nice overhaul. Yeah. So all the uh, Numenor guys got plus one in their fight? Yeah. Uh, strength. Strength, sorry, yeah, I'm sorry. Strength, they got plus one in their strength. Mm -hmm. uh, what's their army bonus? Uh, they get resistant to magic, I believe, if they're within six inches of death. I'll look real quick. Uh, um, both uh, Isildur and um, uh, Elendil got really good. Elendil, so one of the new... Um, so they they um, they have their their rule is Numenor models from this army list get their courage value increased by one. So same okay, as same as Gondor, yeah. but both uh, so um, Elendil mm -hmm. um, has a master crafted sword, Narsilion, and a hand and a half whip, and that's another one of the changes is hand and a half. So if you have a two handed sword in this edition, you have to go two handed with it. If you had have a hand and a half weapon, uh, then you can either choose to go. Uh, Single-handed or two-handed? Yep. Uh, he has... Uh, Narsil is a hand-and-a-half weapon that is uh, master-crafted. So it means he is pretty much burly yep. in the old rules. as a new universal rule, master-crafted. Uh, so if you have a master-crafted weapon, you can go two-handed without the penalty. And he's strength five. Mm -hmm. So he's like winning th things on fours and threes. Yep. Yeah, he's a beast. Uh, his fight value... His style, I think, is basically the same... Uh, they did give him a 12-inch uh, steadfast, which I'm not sure he might have had already. Uh, and then he has his rule, where he has fortified spirit against magical powers. This always affects him, even if he's out of will. So, I mean, good luck getting magic on Yeah, all right. And here's the other thing. Now, I was thinking about uh, resistance to magic. Uh, Isildur gets resistance to magic if he's within six inches of Elendil. But it's a rule that Isildur has. And... Arian or what is it? Anarian. Anarian? So possible. Who no mod's been released yet? Yep. No so, profile's been released? I, I think the general thing is we're gonna see um a Numenor supplement. Yeah. Probably after Gondor. Maybe War. something called the Last Alliance or yeah. something. Yeah. Um Captains of Numenor are beasts still, they're the same, their fight value's the same, fight five, they could um, yeah. People have always thought all... captains of uh, Numenor are amazing, yeah. and they are. Uh, they do have the same rule, Blood of Numenor, where they get resistant to magic if they're within six inches of Elendil, Isildur, or Anarion. Uh, Warriors of Numenor, they're, you know, the beast fight for, strength for, defense for base. They take a shield and all that. Um, and then they have the same rule as everyone else, they get master, uh, magic resistance if they're within six inches of uh, those three heroes. And I think. It's not necessarily an army bonus, but it's kind of what we were talking about earlier. That's just a huge buff that Alan Bill gives him. I think that's something you're talking about. You can't wish Alistar had. Yeah, I wish yeah. Alistar would give him plus one fight value. Maybe magic resistance. <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Uh, Dane gives people fearless. Um, Thranduil gives people plus one to their twins. Yeah, it's in three inches. Yeah. That's their army bonus, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about Ministerius. So I'll skip this. Minister, I think, got better. And with the new heroes, I think they're going to continue to get better, but they didn't change that much. Yeah. Except um, for Aragorn and yeah, some sorry. of the other components, yeah. which I think is, is fun. Um, the Fiefdoms is actually an army that I really like playing. I've played this army probably the most. Them and Rohan I've played the most out of the new edition stuff. Um, the All the heroes in this list got fanatically better, in my opinion. Uh, 
for all in the Fed can like one turn kill things now, <laughs> like a, a cave troll. Um, the Emer Hill's the same. He got a little bit more expensive. Um, I think his presence on the field is still the same as twelve inch steadfast. He's a twelve inch banner. Um, their army bonuses is, is if you have a pure army, then you get to use the the special rules marked with a um, star. Then your whole army gets it. Yeah. So for instance, Forlorn the Fed has Lord of Lasarnock. Uh, Axemen within six inches of Forlorn must reroll a one when rolling to wound. So they get a free feint. So they get a free feint, and the whole army gets it. And that's true with uh, Engbor with Dune here. They have it. Um, and another cool thing is that the captains of Dol Amroth, the knights of Dol Amroth, and the men at arms of Dol Amroth, they all get uh, plus one of their fight value if they're within three inches of. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty big. So you have fight six captains, fight five uh, troops. Um, the clansmen of Lambden were a big one for me. They got a uh, the um, broadsword, which means they can they have to go two handed. That's something that I forgot to mention. They they changed it where two handed weapons have to go two handed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, eight handed enough. Yeah. Um, so their what rule is those if they go two handed and roll a natural six, then they yeah, don't they, take the penalty. Which is cool. They've yeah. done that with a couple of yeah. profiles. The Knight of the White Tower got that, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a pretty. They're pretty hard hitting. They're you know still really good like scout units and high courage. Uh, that's another thing about uh, Forlon has added a horn in his profile. So, um, Blackroot Veil vale Archers are um, got a little bit better. They got the ability to take a spear, and then they got their Dead Eye Shot, which means anytime um, they're benefiting off a of heroic shoot, they may reroll a uh, wound, failed wound rolls about everything, which is really good. All right, here's Dun Harrow. So this was a big one. Um, I played it once, and I thought it was really cool, really good army, really fun. Uh, King of the Dead got better. Um, it's like a weird army though because you can take Aragorn in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and and get your army bonus. You get your army bonus. If I you think it's, is it just rangers you can take in it? You can ally in uh, rangers or. Uh, so the Dunhara list will automatically be impossible allies if the force doesn't include the Aragorn. I don't know out of the army matrix, but I do think you can ally with, uh, rangers. Okay. I think this is like so you can take Aragorn, and he actually really helps that list out a lot. He does, yeah. He gives it the might they need. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the one thing about this list, if you pledge the pure uh, dead of Dunharrow, then it lacks might. That's that's the one thing I noticed. Um, basically, the warriors and the, the riders of the dead are the exact same. They can lead... Um, but they yeah, they 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 can be like one guy per eight, so you yeah. you don't have to have uh, heroes. Um, Arnor, I have not played it at home. No, uh, I think um, the I think that Arnor is still good. Yeah, but I think that they definitely got nerfed, or they definitely saw. Yeah, from what they were, from what they were. Yeah, from what they were. Yeah, uh, Arnor now is not like Arnor is like ancient Arnor. Yeah, where it's Arvadui Malveth. Um, Captains of Arnor and Warriors of Arnor. You can take Rangers of Arnor as well. And then you can take, I think, Hobbit Archers can be included. Yeah, Hobbit, Hobbit Archers can be included in this army. Um, Which lore wise makes sense. Yeah. And I, I you know, again, it's like they, the, the before you can take Warriors of Arnor with like the Grey Company heroes, yeah. which was the perfect storm for them. I think that was something that was really, really hard hitting. And I'm kind of glad they changed it because it didn't really make sense. And then, you know, it goes back to the whole theme thing. Yeah. That's what they talk about doing, is yeah. making things a little bit more thematic. Yep. And uh, they wrote the rules to reflect that. And that's actually something we try to do with RGS. Yep. And it actually, I think, helps with the, the gameplay. Yeah, and I think, I think so too. So here's where I'll almost get the expert talked about it. Just key points. Uh, Rivendell. Uh, yeah, Rivendell definitely, I think, got better uh, in terms of yeah. their heroes. I think Elrond now is actually Yeah, Elrond on is... Par. Elrond's really good, especially with Linder. Yep. Um, uh, he has Wrath of Brunin, which is Nature's Wrath on Wrath. steroids. It's a channel of Nature's Wrath for yep. free, pretty much. Um, Gilglad, uh, is Gilglad got better, uh, scarier. I think did, he got... did they give him an Elven Made Spear? Yes. So he has yeah. Elven Made Spear, everyone. Yep. Um, it's pretty much elfin elf sword, elfin blade, so you get to win duels. Yeah, Glorfindel got a big increase. Yeah, in Glorfindel's that. amazing yep. now. Uh, Aristor got an extra might point. Um, Arwen got Wrath of Brunin, and she got an extra will point. So she's one she's for one. For one. Yep. Uh, I think the twins got a point increase, but they're virtually the same. Um, Gildor, no, Gildor has heroic defense. I don't know that's pretty cool. Um. I'll say 
I think, think Linder's... Kierden got a Kierden got a recurrent uh, will. And I think Linder's the same. Yeah, Linder's the same. But he, I think uh, if he's within six inches of, they might change the he, range of his. Six inches. He uh, he gets that resistance to magic. Yeah. I don't know if it was three before. It was six. It, it was oh. his reoccurring will to Elrond. It was okay. three. Uh, Lothlorien, they got, um, they definitely got a big overhaul, because before it was the Woodland Realms, so they had Thranduil. Yeah. Uh, Legolas. Legolas. Yeah. Which is, you mostly saw Thranduil, Legolas, and Galadriel. Yeah. Um, so now you're probably going to see Rubel, Kelborn, Kelborn, Haladir, and I think Kelborn got a little bit better. I've taken Kelborn quite a bit. Yep. Um, and he never really performed, so hopefully now with the changes, I think he had some um, new magical powers and stuff. And Lords of the West, is it Elf Lords of the West? It's just called Lords of the West. Lords of the West, which is a lot of magical, uh, not magical, a lot of elf heroes have yep. it. Um, basically, I think most of the big heroes for uh, Rivendell have it. Uh, Galadriel has, uh, she's virtually the same in terms of like her casting uh, abilities. Um, she does have a heroic defense, which is I think something she needs. Yeah, she had. Yeah, yeah, she 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 was really. Um, a lot of people used to backdoor her all the time, and yeah, yeah. I mean, she's defense three, so you just go in there and winning our uh, fours with unarmed normal troops. Yeah, one attack. Uh, Kelborn, he he did get something cool. He got um, enchanted blades, which you get rerolls to wound. Um, something like you Kelborn can cast enchanted blades on himself and you can use your numbers to trap models and then that gets you rerolls to wounds. So it kinda acts almost like the knockdown of a horse. I was kinda hoping they'd give him the option to take a horse. Yeah. Uh no one in this list can take a horse still. Uh, except for the uh, they, knights. The knights are actually actually um, back up to par because they got yeah. yeah, they changed uh woodland creature. Um Rumal I think got a point increase. Uh, yes. He also has her. He used to be uh, 75 points base, I believe. Yes. So you got a point increase. Uh, his swift parry is the same. He uh, went up to defense 7, though. He used to be defense 6. And that's big. And I think that's the thing for this army is everything went up a defense value. Uh, the Galadrian Warriors, they're D5 now base, and they take a shield to make him D6. Um, Stormcallers can call Enchanted Blades now and call wins, so they don't have Nature's Wrath anymore. Uh, and they don't call Call Wins on a 2 plus anymore, it's a 3 plus. Uh, Guard of the Gleaning Court, I think, are the same. The Wood Elf Warriors are, uh, they went up a point, and they got a, uh, Elven Maid, Hand and Half Sword, and then an Elven Cloak put in their profile. Uh, Fangorn, got Beast, uh, this is one of those armies that I kind of want to try someday. Uh, they, uh, they did some really cool things. They finally made it where, uh, Mary Pippin can be on Treebeard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have some rules where they can pick models up and use them as a weapon. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yep. Um, and if they're a pure army, then they're resistant to, like, magical effects that can move them, or prevent them from moving. And, uh, that's really cool. Misty Mountains, uh, this is a big one. Guahir and the Eagles themselves got a huge increase. Not just, like, their profiles, I think they're the same, but it's the fact that they added the monstrous charge form. So if they charge a guy, then they get the, uh, cavalry bonus, basically. Yeah. And, the uh, Guahir got a... Guahir went from one 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 to one uh, three might three will three fate, which makes sense. He's yep. he's a lord of eagles. Cool. Yep. Uh, they changed fly, uh, so now like models like uh, Felvis and eagles have a base movement, and you can move into woods and stuff now with your base movement, and then you can fly as your special rule, move twelve inches and fly like normal. Yeah, which eh, makes sense. Yeah, it makes it sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, dwarves got a big overhaul. There's basically the old kingdom of Durin, uh, which you can have Durin, Marden, and Floyd. King's Champ. And then there's the other section where you can take um, Balin, King's Champ, Floyd, uh, and I think that's, you can take Gimli. Yeah. You can take uh, Ori and Nori, I think. Yeah. Owen or something like that. Some of the uh, arable reclaimed heroes. Um, the biggest thing, I think, from this is that. Um, your Kurth guard now have Burly. The Kaiser guard, that's like one of the big things I saw. Where they can hit really hard now. Straight forward with Burly. Yeah. Um, I think and their army bonus is still solid. I too. think that is pretty much a must to take Durin. Because yeah. he gives him the Hearth guard, right? Yeah. So I think it's a must to take Durin. Which you didn't see Durin a lot in the back of the day. So the evil armies, evil wise. Do you want to do this in a separate day? I want to do this in a separate yeah, day. I, I actually have not playtested any of my. Um, yeah. Army we'll do the we'll do that in a separate video, and then we'll go over the uh, 
We'll go over the uh, Hobbit book real quick. Well, let's go go over that separately. Separate video? Yeah, because yeah, we, I would like to talk about that one a lot. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, um, we'll wrap it up here. Yep. Um, stay tuned for the part two of this video. Yep. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and comment below.